Hi everyone, this is Ryan from rpnt.ca, and today we're going to be learning about the drug Risperidone, also known as Risperdal. You can use the timestamps in the video description to jump ahead. Risperidone belongs to the atypical antipsychotic drug classification. Atypical antipsychotics are also known as second generation or non-conventional antipsychotics. Before we talk about Risperidone specifically, we'll cover a bit of information about the two main antipsychotic drug classes. Antipsychotics can either be typical or atypical. Typical antipsychotics, also known as first generation or conventional antipsychotics, are used in the treatment of psychosis and behavioral problems. They can be highly effective, but have a higher risk of causing side effects, especially extrapyramidal symptoms, or EPS, which we'll talk about more later on. Typical antipsychotics are used in the treatment of positive symptoms of schizophrenia, which are thoughts, feelings, or actions that are added on to a person's regular behaviors. Hallucinations and delusions are examples of positive symptoms of schizophrenia. Atypical antipsychotics, like risperidone, are the newer and generally safer option that show fewer extrapyramidal symptoms. Atypical antipsychotics are also used in the treatment of psychosis and behavioral problems. Atypical antipsychotics can be used in the treatment of both positive and negative symptoms of schizophrenia. Negative symptoms being things that are taken away from regular behaviors, such as apathy or having a flat affect. The symptoms of schizophrenia and other mood disorders are thought to be caused by overactivity of different neurotransmitters in the brain, especially dopamine and serotonin. It is thought that risperidone inhibits dopamine and serotonin receptors, thereby reducing the symptoms of schizophrenia. But keep in mind that schizophrenia and risperidone are still not completely understood. Risperidone is used in the management of various mood disorders, including schizophrenia, acute mania, autism, and bipolar disorder. Remember that as an atypical antipsychotic, risperidone can treat both positive and negative symptoms of schizophrenia. Risperidone can also be used in the short-term management of aggressive or psychotic symptoms in severe dementia. Risperidone can cause what we mentioned earlier as extrapyramidal symptoms, or EPS. EPS are drug-induced movement disorders, including tardive dyskinesia, which is a slow onset of involuntary movements like sticking out the tongue or smacking of the lips, Parkinsonisms, which are the symptoms found in Parkinson's disease, like tremors and rigidity, and other dystonias. Antipsychotics like risperidone may cause a life-threatening reaction called neuroleptic malignant syndrome, or NMS. NMS presents as high fever, confusion, tachycardia, muscle rigidity, and can lead to further complications like rhabdomyolysis, kidney failure, and seizures. Other side effects of risperidone include suicidal ideations, weight gain, hypotension, which may present as dizziness and headache, increased risk for falls, and more. It is most important to be aware of the black box warning of risperidone, which is that risperidone may be associated with increased mortality in older adults with dementia-related psychosis. Risperidone may increase the risk of cerebrovascular adverse events, such as strokes or TIAs, in geriatric clients. Avoid use in clients with Parkinson's disease. The symptoms of Parkinson's are caused by the loss of dopamine, and remember, risperidone inhibits dopamine receptors, therefore risperidone may increase the symptoms of Parkinson's. Risperidone may also cause QT prolongation, which can be seen on an ECG, so precaution should be used if a client already has QT prolongation. Caution should also be exercised in clients with severe CNS depression, uncontrolled seizure disorders or heart failure, suicidal ideations, and more. Always remember to assess and monitor for side effects of risperidone. Watch for the signs and symptoms of EPS, NMS, and suicidal ideations. Ensure proper fall prevention is in place, especially for elderly clients. Avoid abrupt discontinuation of risperidone. Keep in mind that it may take up to six weeks for the full effect of risperidone to kick in. And as with all drugs, always be aware of potential interactions with risperidone, some of which include dopaminergic agonists, clozapine, carbamazepine, and other CNS depressants like alcohol and more. So you can go very in-depth into antipsychotics, but I hope this helped give a good base for risperidone. If you'd like to try a free antipsychotic drug quiz, I've placed a link in the video description for that. If you have any questions, 
Please let me know in the comments or visit rpnt.ca for more help.